Welcome back to a new video. It's January 2020 and it's almost one and a half, two years ago I created my first kitchen knife. And today we're gonna recreate that kitchen knife. I'm talking about the Tsujihiki knife, the very first video of mine which got a little bit viral. And I'm gonna use a piece of feather pattern Damascus I used for the Chris. It's a leftover piece. If you wanna see how I forged that feather pattern, go check out that video. I'll put it in the description as well. So let's jump right into the forging. So I just watched a video I published back in 2018 about Tsujiki and I'm still using the same setup. I'm using the fly press to stretch out the Damascus and my anvil and hammers to shape the blade. So I'm just gonna use the same setup and see what we can make right now. ground the knife and I did the same grind I did when I made the Sujihiki one and a half years ago. Uh, I just did a really thin convex, slightly convex grind, like a laser grind they call it. You see it's just, uh, yeah it's really thin towards the, towards the edge so it's almost ground to a zero before putting in a secondary bevel and I ground it up to a trisect finish. A45 and then I only had to spend like a few minutes with the uh, 400 grit paper to get it up to the finish ready for etching. You can see right here it's just a really clean satin finish.
straight lines and it's ready to be put into the ferric chloride right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the ferric chloride, degrease it first, put it in the ferric chloride and then polish it in between cycles and do that for several times. Um, yeah, and after that it's uh, time to give it a handle. So let's go. So before I'm gonna throw it in the acid, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the development of overall profile of kitchen knives I made during the last one and a half year. So the most important thing I learned when designing a kitchen knife is this section right here, the very last section should be flat. This should be flat, this should be flat in order to make for a stop when cutting. So when you're cutting vegetables or anything else, you rock over the um, over your cutting board and it stops right there because it's that flat and you don't get accordion cuts. So you don't want this to be slightly hollow, not even a little bit. This should be that flat and then you can, depend depends on what your customer wants, but you can give it a slight belly or a total flat profile. On this one I gave it a fair good bit of belly and then I also gave it a little bit of an upwards curve on the spine. This is something I like to do myself because just gives for a nice aesthetic flow uh, yeah, of the whole knife. I just like to do this. Another thing that's different about this knife than my last knife, my first Tsujihiki kitchen knife one and a half years ago, is I make these heels. I used to make them a little bit wider right here. Aesthetically, I like them to be a little bit thinner, uh, less wide, I mean. Uh, also, I make the, the the height of the heel is a little bit higher right here than it used to be one and a half years ago. Uh, this is nice because now it's like at the right height, so don't you don't just bust your knuckles when you're using the knife, you know. So just give some clearance. So yeah, that's a uh, within one and a half year I try to learn as much as possible from getting like feedback from from chefs using my knives okay so this is good this isn't good and yeah it's still uh, improving I think but yeah it's 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 interesting to compare this design to the design one and a half year ago um, yeah there's there's a big difference uh, if you look closely so now we're really going to etch So I'm checking for flatness using this Me Too Toyo flatness checking thingy. I don't know, they sent me a whole lot of uh, free equipment. Thanks. They sent me a calipers, some, yeah, this thing, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, they told me it's for checking flatness, so this should be perfectly flat and you can use it to check for flatness using a light source behind it. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, sending the free stuff. It's really appreciated. Thank you.